Next up, because we're going in what I picked up as the order of primarily first voting and then alphabetically. So next up we have New Zealand for 2020, followed by Utah for 2019 NASFIC. Trust me, this makes sense in my head. <laughs> Um, is the TSB arena uh, 
we also do we've got the, uh, the map up there. Um, so the, we are going to be using multiple sites, uh, multiple buildings. Um, however, the, even the, uh, the preferred site A down here, the distances between these, although you've got to go outdoors, is not much um, more than the distance between the two furthest places inside here. <laughs> yes, uh, inch and a half heels, 1,000 steps from one side to the other. How do I know this? Because I was wearing inch and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's um, our search. You can, you can see those online or come and uh, talk to us about the details of them um, on the desk. Um, we have, like uh, most places outside North America, we're going to be having to use quite a number of different hotels. We don't have the big hotels attached to the convention centers that we get to North America. Um, but we have many hotels um, of different sizes, different combinations. So whether you need to uh, do it on as much budget as you can, or whether um, you're looking for a bit more luxury, we've got both ends of the scale. Um, if you want good food, you just throw a stand in. There's lots and lots of different options. Um, I spoke for choice when I was down there in December. Um, it's a beautiful place to visit. Um, as a city, it's very compact, um, it's very pretty. It's right on the, uh, the ones in Harbour. Um, and, yeah, so I've already said that. Okay. I'm not sure we've got that slide. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's I think all I want to talk about the, uh, the facilities. We can take uh, more questions about that. Um, I think over today to talk about people. So one thing, uh, as you may have noticed, up here we have a pretty cosmopolitan international group of folks representing the New Zealand bid. And we understand that New Zealand will, it's not something that the New Zealanders can <coughs> just put on without assistance and without uh, support from the rest of the world. Uh, we intend to have a very diverse, very spread uh, committee running this Worldcon, experienced people, working with the, uh, the local folks to provide the best possible Worldcon that we can uh, with the, the uh, benefit of the knowledge and experience of, well, the entire world and the entire Worldcon running community. Yes, we've, uh, run, we ran SmallCon South uh, last December, which was very successful. We Skyped into SmallCon, and our team was very happy to um, exchange views and to learn about the, the intricacies of running Worldcon. You, you find that no matter how many conventions you run, you talk to someone who's run a Worldcon, and they'll say, yes, you've done this, yes, you've done that. But of course, running Worldcon is completely different. <laughs> Uh, so I guess we'll find out. Uh, but we do have a very keen team of people who have a wide range of skills and we're looking at their skill sets. Uh, one of the things that's just come in is new health and safety regulations in New Zealand. This requires um, events now to have their own health and safety officer, which we have just appointed. And uh, we are, he's doing online courses to bring them up to speed. And he will be on deck to actually look after that sort of thing. We have so far two questions for New Zealand. <laughs> what size of a convention are you expecting to have in terms of attending that? Based on uh, the Australian conventions and uh, other like conventions, we're looking at 1,500 to 2,000, maybe a little more. Uh, we understand it's a long way. We'll be delighted to have you. Uh, anyway. Yeah, what we'll, we'll, we'll be um, working very closely on the budget. Um, Kelly Bueller, who's uh, one of our New Zealand people, used to be based in the US. Uh, is very experienced with uh, welcome well, budgeting, so she's working on a lot of different options, different contingencies. The facilities have a reasonable stretch um, within them, um, and uh, so there's, there's a lot of expansion. And we're not expecting those facilities to be full with many other events, so we've got the expansion if we need it, but we also can deal with a, a modest sized convention. Yes, the, where we're our main site. Uh, the main convention centre within that site regularly hosts the quilters who have between 3,000 people uh, convention there every year. 
So the Pilgrims can do it. <laughs> so I can wait. And they can get the moon. About moving around. Is there a step free route between the buildings of your site? Yes. And if walking through a building is in cold, is, is the cold weather going to be a problem for people with accessibility? Mm -hmm. You will have to wear layers. Uh, it could well be raining. It's Wellington. It'll be windy. It'll be rain. But like Wales. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, uh, wearing layers as you like. And as I said, the, it will be wet and windy, but the temperature is going to be um, not what you expect of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. And the, the, uh, there is step-free access. I, when I was there in December, I walked around uh, um, the sites, and yes, there, there are there are a couple of places where you need to go up a level, but there are there are lifts in place um, for those. Um, I'm not sure about movies. Um, it, it, yeah, I, they, they 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 may have to take more security routes. Um, the, the, I think the lifts are mostly uh, pedestrian lifts and they don't take a bogey, but there are routes for the bogeys between, between each of the sites. And the sites themselves inside the buildings are, are almost entirely step free access. There are a couple of bits in like a fowler centre which we'll, we'll just make sure that um, they're not used for anything which would require access. So there'll be that with offices or such like and we'll make sure that that won't be a problem. Not going to have time to ask all of these, but a couple more. What are your party arrangement aspirations like? The parties will be in a fanfare situation, similar to the Hong Kong, uh, simply because New Zealand hotels don't have the big suites um, the same way a lot of hotels uh, in the Northern Hemisphere do. And on the uh, corporate talkage with it, that's part of the negotiations that are still going. They're not as they're not as nice as some of the American hotels about this, but they're not as bad, I think, as, as the British or the, uh, um, the Irish Convention Centre about these. But it, it's something we're aware of when we're negotiating. <laughs> and um, how is outreach going to include Maori fans, authors, and contributors? Yes, we'll be working very closely with the uh, New Zealand Writers Association and with the Iwi, which is the Maori. Uh, so we will definitely have a, a flavour of that in the convention. Um, this is something that New Zealand events will do. They will do this uh, being inclusive. We, um, yeah, we do the diverse interest. Thing. And uh, a final question. What's the public trans transportation like, especially to or from hotels or the convention centre? In Wellington, pretty good. Mind you, the hotels that will be around the convention centre will all be so close that there's not going to be much of, of a problem. They'll be within the distance for the most part. There'll be, if you have an option for a, a cheaper one further away, there'll be Uber or something. Thank you very much.